Well, hey everybody, thanks for stopping back in at the Red Barn. In this episode, we continue working on the lower transmission mount, but I do break out a cool new tool. It's a, well, I guess you just have to watch and see. Okay, time to fit this tab setup and intermediate brace. And here is just the quick mock-up to check fit. So I had to redo the tab because either it moved out of position or the rotation that the, you know, the fact that I started off with, you know, just a tab. And you can see it allows this, this tab can sort of move where the hole moves in an arc. So it was able to kind of make up for any inaccuracies in my initial measurement. But when I went with the new design, this is the first one, the new design, I can't swing it. So it forced me to get honest about where this thing really lives because I now have to get it to weld to that surface as well. So I had to move the hole, reshape the part, and, then and uh, it looks really good. It fits nicely and I think it's kind of cool looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this final position and tacked in place and then pull everything out and bench weld it. Oh, and then the other thing that mattered was, actually I should have started with this. Uh, I'm not gonna bother turning all this back on, but I verified the level of the main cradle and carried that same measurement back here. And again, that caused me to have to get real honest with, with uh, the position of where that tab really needed to be and what that measurement was gonna be. So uh, a little two steps forward, one step back kind of thing, but I'm really happy with that. So we'll just continue on with this design. All right, here's another one for the tool fanatics amongst us. This is one of the neatest little things I've found. It's a little teeny metal router. And these are available on Amazon under various manufacturers' names for like 50, 60 bucks. And uh, it's just a single 45 degree carbide spinner. And it is freaking loud, so I'll just buzz it once so you get an idea of why I'm gonna put you on music instead of listening to this. It's loud, hence the ear protection. And what I'm gonna do with it is, again, not that anybody's ever gonna see it, but we'll know it's there. I wanna chamfer the outside edge of my tabs on that bracket. I did this on the engine mounts, and I just, I just think it's cool. I have a tool, let's use it. So again, pardon the loudness, but, uh, and this thing's, you might think I'm crazy for doing it this way, but it works pretty well for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the routing. But there you go. It's just a very cool look. It looks a lot more finished. And then with the other one done, I now have got a, an inside and outside set of tabs. Again, big time style points that only we will know are there. All right, I got everything positioned where I want it. So I just want to tack a few things in place so I can pull this out and bench weld it. So I mentioned that during the process of this build we were probably going to see a bunch of different kinds of things being done with the fixturing table. So what I want to do, and yeah this is probably overkill but you know when's that ever stopped us, I want to make sure that this is square to this, and that these are square to the world. So, so I've got her a couple of these slotted 90s so I can squeeze them to the dimension that I want, and then they're locked down with those expanding ball screws. And then this is just pushed all the way forward. This bar, you can see I've got pinned here, so I know that's square to the world. And I know that's now square to this, and this is square to the back of the table. So I'm almost ready to go to tack everything in place. 
I'm going to do one more thing, and that is, let me just use a couple little, couple little C-clamps. So that all looks nice and square, so I can go ahead and start tacking stuff into place. Is our cool zippity doodah bracket. I now have, I gotta get more, some more welding done on here. Anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. Use your materials. much fiddling with fixturing as you just saw <laughs> we have got a fully welded rear cradle all done ready to go in the car well fully welded except for if I decide to box and uh, truth be told I ran into I created I didn't run into I created a problem for myself what I didn't do well was I didn't plan these welds I didn't plan these two crossbar welds as well as I should have. <clears throat> and as you probably know, welding ends up creating shrinkage. Well, what do you think happened when I welded this? These went like this. Not a lot, but enough that they didn't, they, they didn't fit anymore, didn't fit. They probably moved. By the time you get out here, a little bit of, of shrinkage here <laughs> it moves these things quite a bit. So, I ended up having to give it the old heave ho. I gave it one of these. And I'm glad you're lucky I didn't film it. It was not pretty. But I shouldn't have done that either. And what it ended up doing was I didn't get an even, an even correction, an even bend on these. So it caused this to move, you know, I don't know, an eighth. I didn't quite get this bend the same. So it pushed this a teeny bit off. And what you wouldn't know, unless I showed you. This is the floaty bushing. I, you know, when I say this is rubber mounted, this is what I mean is this is a, a rubber bushing in here. But it's got two sort of, I don't know what you'd call those, shouldered. I always think of shouldered washers, but anyway. And then these things contact in the middle and allow this thing to float side to side. Anyway, what happened when I put it all back together was that it caught, because I didn't bend those things equally or correct them equally, it caused this to be not centered as well as I'd like it. So I went ahead and manually corrected it and measured this time and used the fixturing table to get it all located so that this is now, you know, our tabs are now centered with this thing located where we want it. Again, something no one else will see. And it really wasn't that big a problem. It was just, something that we just can't have. So anyway, we are now all nice and done. All We're right, good. I do want to make a plate for the top of this to close it all in. And the thing's plenty strong, so this is not going to be made out of any significantly thick material. Um, I think it's going to be, what is this, 16 gauge? A little 16 gauge plate. So I'm going to go ahead and make that make that piece right now.
And by the way, shout out to 3M abrasives. This is the 3M Cubitron. These things are more expensive than most other abrasives. They also last like two or three times longer. So they may seem more expensive to buy, but they end up being about the same cost or maybe even less. And they are super controllable. You won't go wrong with 3M Cubitron abrasives. Okay, and now I'm gonna go put a bend in it. And I'm just gonna make sure I have enough left over on this end to wrap around. Okay, I like that. This end can get trimmed. And now I gotta work out the clearance for how far back that can be, how far back this, this has to be to clear the pivoting link. So I'll go do that real quick. All right, it works out that that can be a 90 that just comes right to the edge of the tube above it. All right, so there's our box cover. So now it's really just a question of, you know, whereabouts I want it to hit the bar. Probably just dead center would be okay. Although, I could wrap that around the bottom and just have the whole front be plated. Maybe that's what I'll do is I'll just knock that around the corner. So there'll be, there'll be our setup. We've got the bend all set. And what it does is it sits and get it in here. It's gonna be easier once I get it tacked in place, you'll see. It almost locks in, not quite. So, all right, and there all I'm doing is my best to fuse. Well, I got to use a little filler, but I just wanted to fuse the edges of the box plate to the side plates, and then I'm going to go ahead and grind those down like I've done here on the sides of the of that effort and you know just disappear the welds so it looks like it's just all one box so there's a couple more little touch-up spots so by the time this is powder coated it's going to look like that is just some odd shaped box that we somehow added tabs to all right i just dressed the dressed the welds and did my best to disappear them and now you can get a a good look at kind of the final the essentially final product. So you get the, it's kind of a all one piece looking sort of a thing. All right, looks like it's just a big chunk of stuff that's been maybe not pierced, but almost, you know. And there's a couple places where, you know, like I'm not gonna do too much more to it. Like I said, by the time it gets powder coated and the fact that it's underneath the car, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> I think it's overkill, but yay. So there's our, there's our lower mount, all set to go. And I am really happy with how that turned out. A couple lessons learned, like I said, better planning on some of the weldment. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, you can still see we, we, uh, we retained our, our little router edge. So it looks, it just looks really nice. I like it, I like it, happy, happy. Come on, you gotta admit, that looks pretty cool. Well, anyway, I think that mount looks great. I'm really happy with how it's coming along. Yeah, we still have to finish up the rear struts and get them attached to the car. That'll be happening real soon. But uh, great progress as far as I'm concerned. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. And again, comments or questions, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Maybe even think about subscribing. Anyway, you all take care. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.